A few years ago, there was a young girl. She had a baby out of wedlock. She was still coming to church consistently, bless her heart. And then she got pregnant again. You could Wait, did she have the first kid? She did. Okay. That's what I'm saying. She had her first child, but she gets pregnant again. Okay. I remember kind of sensing like this kind of like, whoa, she's pregnant again. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not married. She's not in the best place to be having more kids. Sure. And I remember just talking to her, not that's my heart mm -hmm. and just loving on her where she was at. So I decided to throw her a baby shower. Beautiful. And I did a shout out to the church. Please let's surround her. You know, let's let's love on her, give her what she needs, support her in every way for what's going on in her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And I remember one lady comes up to me and she said, why are we giving her a baby shower? We're just condoning her behavior. And I said, that is why so many Christians are having abortions because of your response right there. What's up, guys? So we're back for episode two. We're so excited. Um, yeah. yeah, we're super excited to be on this journey and opening up this podcast with you guys. So if you're continuing to listen, we just want to thank you for your time. Yes, and again, we're, we're hoping and we're praying for every episode that this would truly be a blessing to you and that you take something away from it. Hey guys, it's Brittany. I'm an associate marriage and family therapist practicing here in California. And we're so excited that you're listening to our podcast. We hope and pray it's been encouraging and just inspiring you through your healing journey. We do want to make a disclaimer though. The content and conversations that we're having are strictly for psychoeducational purposes and shouldn't take the place of therapy. But we're happy to support you if you're looking for a therapist or looking for resources in the area. We're happy to link you to that and we highly encourage it. Thanks for listening. Um, today we're talking about a pretty serious and important topic um, regarding the church and the church yeah. response to uh, abortions and, and kind of how that's handled. And so we want to talk about some of our experiences, but we ultimately want to talk about how we think the church can can do better or, or just solutions to it. Um, so, yeah, Becky, I, I want to kind of start with you because you've been in this ministry for so many years, right? You've been on platforms. You've mm -hmm. been interviewed in front of churches mm -hmm. around this topic. And so I know you've you've had good experiences. You've had bad experiences, can you start with with some of your experiences in yes, general? Yes, that, that is a great question. And again, we would just want to reiterate, reiterate like the last time that there are more Christians having abortions than people who are not identifying as a Christian. So again, we're talking about how the church can help or what's a great word? Equip those uh -huh. Who have unwanted preg not unwanted unexpected unexpected pregnancies? Well, it can be un unwanted. I could, as well, you're right. It could be unwanted. But generally, un unexpected, yeah. Or it could turn unwanted. Anyway, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I remember a few years ago, um, I there was a young girl. She had a baby out of wedlock. She mm -hmm. was still coming to church consistently. Bless her heart, and mm -hmm. then. Um, she got pregnant again. And I remember when she got pregnant again, you could- Wait, did she have the first kid? She did. Okay. That's what I'm saying. She had her first child. The baby was probably one and a half, two years old. She got she gets pregnant again. Okay. And I remember kind of s sensing, and I, I like this kind of like, whoa, she's pregnant again. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not married. She's nothing- I mean, she's not nothing, but she's just not in the best place to be having more kids. Sure. And I remember just talking to her, and that's my heart, mm -hmm. and just loving on her where she was at. And then I realized she had no friends. Mm. She had very little friends. And so I decided to throw her a baby shower. Beautiful. And I did a shout out to the church Please let's surround surround her. You know, let's let's love on her, give her what she needs, support her in every way for what's going on in her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And I remember one lady comes up to me and she said, Why are we giving her a baby shower? We're just condoning her behavior. And I said, That is why so many Christians are having abortions because of your response right there. 
There it is, Becky. There it is. There it is. I mean, just hearing that just gets me all types of I frustrated know. and angry. It's just, oh, gosh. But the, the hard thing, when I told her about this, she got really offensive. Of course. But then I had a real talk with her, and her heart changed because I said, this is not the heart of Christ. I said, well, what if she has 13, you know, pregnancies and we give her a baby shower? What, are we going to stop giving her baby showers? <laughs> yeah. You know, when yeah. is it going to be too much to say, I'm sorry, we can't condone your behavior anymore? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that, I, there was a heart change with her, just that one person. I remember, she, and she's very different now, ever since we had that conversation. And I remember also, because I'm a, I was for a while a community outreach manager for Real Options. So what I would do is I go to different churches and talk about what Real Options does. And what Real Options does is we we have five clinics in the Bay Area and we help women who have an unexpected pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And so they can wrestle out their feelings of not sure what they want to do. So they feel like they don't have to have an abortion. We're just offering all their options. Mm-hmm. They know when they walk into that clinic, we do not offer abortion. Um, but we do know this, that if a, if a woman comes in and she's wrestling with it, if she um, has an ultrasound, and they said just to understand maybe where you're at in your mm-hmm. pregnancy, mm-hmm. Uh, 90% of women who get an ultrasound choose life. So mm-hmm. that's pretty, I'm just going to like encapsulate a little bit of what Real Options does. Real Options Open Medical Clinics is a proud sponsor of Permission to Grieve. They provide caring, compassionate, high quality, holistic health care with or without insurance, support services, optimal health education, and reproductive loss healing to women, men, students, and families positively impacting thousands each year in the Bay Area and beyond. Go to friendsofrealoptions.net to learn more. So mm-hmm. that's pretty, I'm just going to like encapsulate a little bit of what Real Options does. But I remember I was going to uh, this church and um, I remember he uh, he wanted to talk a little bit about my testimony and I was totally fine with that. And there's about 400 people there mm-hmm. and he had the microphone and we're doing this like interview thing. Right. And so he starts asking questions. All He's like, so what does Real Options do? I yep. just did it and then this and we're going back and forth and he goes, did you have an abortion? And I said, yes, mm-hmm. I did have an abortion. And then he goes, did you know that what you were doing was wrong? And I remember in that moment, I feel it's like this Holy Spirit came over me. Yeah. The, the church, I was like, oh. How is she going to respond to this? Right, right. And I remember I'm facing the pastor. Uh And I remember also I faced the audience. Uh I said, yes, I knew exactly what I was doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. But I also would like to clarify that he worked everything for my good. Mm -hmm. And I would not be here talking to you guys unless I had my abortions because through the retreats, mm-hmm. I got into real options, and now I'm a community outreach manager. Mm-hmm. So this is a, an, a scripture that God works everything mm-hmm. for his good. Yeah. For his good. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, he shut up. <laughs> yeah. He had nothing else to say. What, what was he going to say? I mean, I told you earlier, <laughs> just like, where did he think that question was going to go? That's what I'm saying. It's like, Yeah. Like, what if he just would have said, yeah, period? It's just like, where's the hope here, Pastor? Or exactly. What's the point with that Where, question? Where are you going? And I think, yeah. Wow. That was the Holy Spirit there. But yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, I think I hear a lot of what church is saying. And I don't think it's a lot, but I think there's enough churches out there that if they promote abortion healing, then they're going to be like, but if I promote it, then I'm condoning it. Yeah, and I understand that. That's 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 tough. I understand that thinking. Um, but it, but but to our point, it's happening anyways. It, it's, exactly. it's, happening. it's happening anyways. It's happening. It's, and I think the church needs to be a soft landing, you know, place for those individuals. Um, and gosh, I mean, so. Talking so two things come to mind, right? How the church can be a soft healing place for those who do choose abortion right, is one right. thing, but I think it, there needs to be a conversation on how we can 
can help those individuals um, who do have an unexpected pregnancy not choose abortion, number one, is being willing to throw a baby shower. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Right. Like, yeah. being being a resource, right? Like, I think that's just just wild for us to not be able to connect those dots. Like, Yeah, I think as a church, it's hard when you, you – they can think of, okay – you have an unexpected pregnancy. Let's gather her around her. Let's mm-hmm. gather. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of churches do it. Yes, Incred- yes. And they've done incredible jobs. Yes, yes. jobs, job. Mm-hmm. But then when I I think of abortion, it becomes a little bit messy. But you know, I, it's interesting um, going to Catholic churches and Protestant churches, Christian churches. Mm-hmm. Catholics are a lot. They're they're much better at promoting abortion healing than Christian churches. I mean, you would know that better than me. I just I don't, don't I understand don't, I'm it. Not, why? I'm not sure why either. If, if there's just a different mentality, um, they're a lot more open to promoting retreats and support groups, and they'll do it immediately. Protestant churches don't do it as much, and I think honestly, if we really want to get down to the nitty gritty of it. If pastors really understood how many families mm-hmm. have had abortions mm-hmm. in their church, mm-hmm. we would be having abortion healing, pregnancy loss healing, re- reproductive healing in every single church in America. Well, yeah. And, and it's, it's nowhere. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's very rare. You have to really, really find it. Truly. Truly. It is rare. And I think that's that's been our overwhelming message is like pastors— be you just need to to understand that they're in they're in your congregation. These people are there, they're there, and I because for me when I was you know struggling with my decision making process, uh, still kind of going to church here and there. I just remember walking in and thinking to myself, I was the only one in this room, right, of the whole congregation, right, that is in this sh- this position, which was a lie from the enemy, right. Of I course. was not alone. Um, but if I had, and I did, thankfully, because I re- reached out to that counselor and that we did have a ministry mm-hmm. that was available for me. Um, but, you know, knowing that that those resources are, are available changes the whole game. And so thinking about what churches can do is, for one, just having having these resources, these ministries yes. available. But if we go on another tangent is what? this. I don't know if I told you this, but— few months ago, I got a huge lead from a big church. Okay. They understood that there's a lot of people that have reproductive loss, miscarriage, abortion, mm-hmm. and they need help. So they said, Becky, we'd love for you to do support groups in our church. So I, so they hired, not hired me, contracted me out. So I went to that church and I was doing support groups from 7.30 to 8.30 on Wednesday night. I mean, they support, they put it on Instagram, they put it everywhere. Mm. They they put it, they they promoted it two weeks. This is like a church of 5,000 people. Okay. So mega church. Mega church. Okay. Ask me in the eight weeks that I did the support group, ask me how many people came to the support group. One. Yes. One. And she got there by accident. <laughs> she she wandered in. Well, not by but the Lord. The, the, oh, obviously, Lord. the Holy Spirit, the <laughs> Lord, planted her there. But literally, she was wandering around looking for a place to pray. She happened to come in. She, said, what is this? And we're like, we're we're for reproductive loss, and then we're telling her story. And she goes, "Well, I've had an abortion. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> this is where you need so to be." So I, I I knew in that moment, but I think. The hard thing is, I've seen it now, is a church will promote it, but there is so much shame mm. and embarrassment wrapped around yeah. this. They won't even come. Yeah. Gosh, that's hard. I remember, so the the one that I got linked to at my church was kind of a confidential, like, it was a secret. I don't know if I want to call it secret because it was truly powerful, but it wasn't... You know how you go to church and they have the small groups listed? Of course. It wasn't on there, you know, and maybe it was because of confidential reasons. And, you know, I think it is important to, and even with with your resources, right, you can be anonymous and we do try to protect people who don't want to be, you know, kind of outed, I guess, so to speak. But I still think that talking about this openly on the platform 
from the senior pastor, ideally, it's, that's, it's is, all it is. is really makes a difference um, for sure. Well, you know, though, I think I it really hit home for me when I was doing the eight weeks and nobody was showing up. Well, that one le- lesser art lady. That yes, up. yes. But I realized that it's not talked enough about in the pulpit about the normalcy mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. abortion. And I hate mm-hmm. to say this, but there has to be some place of where a pastor is talking about it enough about abortion healing where it becomes normal and then people are going up on stage and talking about it that yeah that really it's a hard thing because for me I'm I'm rare. I'll talk to somebody in the grocery store. I'll I'll tell anyone sure. And I don't care what you think but ask me. This is a great question. Ask me if I've had any negative or judgmental feedback when I tell my story personally to people in the nine years of doing this. Ask me if that is if that as that any ever any negative feedback. Zero. I've had zero negative feedback. From strangers or are you talking about Every specific friend. everyone. Okay. I mean I will say it's not everyone's experience. Per what do you se. mean? I mean I think some people do get negative feedback from from telling their story, depending yeah, on who they're sharing right. it with. But maybe I don't know maybe I'm special. I don't know. <laughs> But I've just got, I've had nobody say, I can't believe you did that. Or why would you talk mm-hmm. about it? Nobody. Majority of the time when yeah. I share my story, yeah. they'll immediately say, well, I had an abortion too. For sure. Yeah, I get that. Now, yeah. I, I, as you're saying, I know you're getting to the place because I've talked to other people. I'll admit to this where they share their story and that other person will rip them apart. Totally. It happens. It happens. But I think it's also important to note that, that, there is the possibility that you do get a, a warm response and you get a me too, you know, a me, me too. too. Um, goodness. I wanted to touch on another point that I totally just slipped my mind. Right. You were talking about something earlier. Um, oh, so once a year, I, well, I don't know if this is, this is, you know, for a fact, but it seems like once a year pastors tend to do a sermon on the sanctity of life. Yes, it's in January. Okay, okay, cool. So it's like on a routine. Yes. And one idea that I'm thinking about is, for one, I am all for that sermon. I think it's an important sermon. Of course. But why not follow it up with kind of what we're talking about of just like, yes, we believe this and, you know, all these things, but we're also going to kind of just validate that you, that people are in the room right now that have experienced this or are contemplating an abortion. And we want to provide resources for that. The majority of, I've seen pastors, they're pretty good at doing that. Okay. I haven't seen it. I have. That's good. That, it is such a delicate subject though, because I think there is, now I, I've seen women uh-huh. who are about to, you know, get an abortion and then they 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 see the real options thing, mm-hmm. what they offer, and they'll go to real options and they choose life. We've had stories of that. Sure. Um, but I think abortion is such shrouded in shame. I remember many years of going up on stage and I would share, I've had two abortions, you know, this is what God has done in my life. Please come to the back table if you'd like to hear more about our whole program yeah. and all that we do. I'd go in the back table. Zero people would come to my table because no one would um, wanted to make sure that if if they came to my table, then somebody would think. Yeah, I don't want to be seen at the table. See, yeah, because then they think I have an abortion. Yeah. So yeah. it's tough. It's a tough one. Which I think, like I said, why I think maybe this church that I was at previously made it more of a private private thing. There was no table. You know, it was a phone number. Yeah. You called. But the the issue, I'm going to say this. Okay. This is, and you may disagree with me. And that's okay. No, let's talk about it. The issue is there has to be a sense of normalcy from the pulpit where well, yeah, it, 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 they're, they're ha- the more people are open to their abortions, up from the pulpit, the more people are there, then we can create anonymity with people. Because mm-hmm. then if more people stand up and say, I've had abortion, then the people who aren't, don't want their face shown can kind of go into the crowd mm-hmm. and find healing. Do, do I, am I making sense here? I mean, I'm agreeing with you. 
I, I, I think it's it's tough. It's tough to execute all this, but I but definitely agree that there needs to be kind of, yeah, to, to normalize it and to, that this is happening. Um, it's tough. It's tough though. Yeah. And so my question is, how do we do that? How do we create normalcy, we as a church, with abortion healing? And I even, do you know how many women I've talked to about miscarriage? They have just as much shame and guilt yes. over their miscarriage. Let's, let's not forget that piece, too. We're talking a lot about abortion in these you know, first two episodes, yeah. and it's from our personal experience, <clears throat> but definitely we, we don't want to leave that out because there is a lot of shame that can come from that for yeah. your own reasons. But yeah, I mean, how, how do we do this? And I, so what you're saying is normalize abortion healing. Because to your earlier point, right, the concern with people, I think, is if we normalize it, we're condoning it. So we don't want to normalize it, Becky. Abortion's not, you right, know, right, 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 right. But really what we're trying to say is how do we normalize the healing point, that it's happening? Number one, we want to do what we can to prevent it. Again, as a church, I think there's a number of things that we can be doing supporting these people, right, providing resources. And we probably will have another episode maybe going into other individual factors that can impact kind of— how someone is vulnerable to an abortion or makes that choice. Good but point. for the healing part, normalizing that part, I mean, goodness gracious, normalizing therapy in general within the church is its own issue, right? So like just healing in general. Well, I, you know, I will say this. When I grew up, mm -hmm. when somebody said, I'm going to therapy, mm -hmm. you were like, oh my gosh, she must be crazy. I, I used <laughs> to think that, you know, oh, they must have really like, she must be schizophrenic. Crazy. <laughs> or something, you have really bad mental issues, right? Yeah, yeah. But now there's been enough people that are doing therapy mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's been like, if you're not doing therapy, you're not cool. I mean, it's like the cool thing to do now <laughs> if you're not going Man, to therapy. I wish that was true for everybody, but yeah. But there is a lot more <laughs> normalcy that enough people are going to therapy that I it's a normal that. thing. Yeah. It's not it's not what it used to be. It's definitely different. There's still some improvement to be made, but for sure. For of sure. Course. I think it, it may be in certain denominations, it might be different. Um, yeah. But well, from my perspective, that's what I see that it's a normal, it's a good thing, it's promoted, encouraged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but from my point of also when I go into the other extreme, um, I think I get a lot of women, lots of women who will call me and they said, I just got through with my therapy session. I told her about my abortions. Um, she just asked, she just gave me a pill. She just gave me a pill and just didn't really acknowledge it. It says like pretty much what, do you, what am I supposed to do about it? Yeah, that's sad. So, and I've had that with a lot of women. And I think as a therapist, um, not me, you as a therapist, where do you, when someone comes up to you and talks to you about their abortion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind, of, kind of like my response to it? Or? Yeah, what is your response to it? Well, I mean, kind of what, I'll just comment on what you just said. I I think it is it is unfortunate where the response is. Now, number one, I think medication in general it c can be helpful. Of course, I'm and not so, saying, it, I'm just saying it's more, you made, they made it into, let's not talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Let's not talk about it. We're not going into the Yeah, we're not going to go into it. We're just going to. Well, I think it speaks to just in general, kind of like the misunderstanding of what what happened. How do I want to word this? Number one, what what can be very common for people when they do experience an abortion is that they have like a post traumatic stress response. Of course, right? right. So PTSD symptoms can happen after an abortion, and of course. you know. Some people they don't agree with that, or they don't buy into that. Um, and then, so that's outside of kind of the the therapy world. But in with in within the therapy world, I think maybe a lack of education of just like yeah, of what can happen. But honestly, really at the core, it's grief and bereavement. And so I think from a therapist's right. point of view, my hope would be that the therapist can at least view it through that sense because we know how to how to treat people who are going through like miscarriage, right? Um, but for for some reason, abortion is different. Um, maybe for, for people to understand how to help them kind of guide them through that healing process. But nevertheless, uh, medication is great. And for some people, it, it works well. Um, right. But there's a lot We're more. We're not against medication. It's yeah, Becky's not against it. I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's, she's just kind of sharing an example. Yeah. But there's a lot more to be said. And so, uh, like I said, I, 
I specifically reached out to therapists along my journey that have a background in abortion. Mm, I don't know if that you. necessarily means that they have their own abortion. So I have a therapist right now. She's amazing. Um, and I reached out to her specifically for this healing. Uh, um, oh, okay. And so she has she has the, the, the background and experience, right? Uh, and she's been doing an incredible job, an incredible job of helping oh, me heal. You're the fruit of it. Look at this yeah, fruit. Yeah, yeah. No, yes. she's, I mean, I could sing her praises for days, to be honest <laughs> with you. But- there's people out there who who can kind of help you walk through this healing in a very specific way, in a detailed way. And if you're with a therapist that can't, go find someone that can. Yeah. So then going back to what can, and I'm sorry, I kind of went on a little tangent. Forgive mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. What can the church yeah. do to help people find healing for their abortion so it's easier for them to um, find healing mm-hmm. for their abortion. For me, I think is the more people are going up on stage yeah. or uh, during a, a message and talking sure. about their healing, and this is what I did, mm-hmm. can be huge for people. Yeah. Even doing like a quick three-minute promo, this is, the, this is the retreats, these are support groups, mm-hmm. this is a therapist that specializes in it, this sure. is... And and did it on a monthly, weekly basis. I mean, mm-hmm. Brittany, I have had. I'm I'm known as the abortion woman at, at, at my church, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm okay it's with funny. that. I, when people see she my face, funny. they think, "Oh, she's the one that had the two abortions," and I'm okay with that. Hey, the Lord's using you, you know. But every year, I would tell my story. This is what we offer at Real Options. These are our retreats. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a lot of times, you know, sometimes people would come up. But I remember there'd be women who could, would hear my story and it'd take them seven years. Mm. I remember one lady, seven years to finally come up to me and say, yeah, I had three abortions. She And every year she'd hear my story. Yeah. She knew what I do. So... A lot of times it's just saying the same thing, planting that seed mm-hmm. and, and, and keep on planting it. And, right, and right. The, it, you will see the fruit. Totally. Yeah. And like like at the church I was at, they, they did the promotion for eight weeks. And I'm going to do it again because I believe Good. eventually there will be fruit from it. Because, again, mm-hmm. it's about making it normal. There's going mm-hmm. to be more fruit from this. Mm-hmm. So that would be my thing to encourage. Do you? Would you like to add on to that? I mean, I, I would just echo kind of what you're saying. Um, being consistent and planting that seed. Uh, testimonies are powerful, you know, and so having people up on the platform, um, speaking to it. I'm also thinking about a family. You know how churches will have like a role that's like a family pastor or like somebody in charge of like the kids ministry but they're also what is it called you know what i'm talking about no okay there's an there's an individual at a previous church i was attending anyways they're like a family pastor so they're over the kids ministry but they're they're kind of generally have this this broad kind of uh space that they're pastoring right? Right, right right so um essentially i'm thinking about family discipleship i think that would be a good spot um, to potentially try to kind of promote some of these resources. That's um, a good point. I don't know, just kind of a creative idea because I think, uh, you know, pe- young couples essentially, yep. essentially, um, or even people who have kids, but they've had abortions in the mix of that. Um, so I'm just thinking creatively of where where these conversations should be had or where they could be had. But generally, I'm with you, Becky. It's just getting it up on, on stage on the platform and the leaders, the elders of the church, buying into that too and supporting Supporting that. Um, it's yeah. funny because the family pastor um, at the big church I was at, um, they were the ones that let me in to okay, do that's good. So, so they were a family pastor. That's but, good. you know, as we're going into it, just thinking about, um, you know, uh, couples that decide when they love each other, they do premarital. Mm-hmm. And then during premarital, premarital mm-hmm. one talks about, well, I had an abortion in my past. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then mm-hmm. someone who's doing the premarital thinks, okay, well, it's under the blood, you know, let's just get you guys married. 
get you guys hitched. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, like how we said, they're bringing that trauma into their marriage. Hello. Hello. <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's a great point, Becky. Because, yeah. yeah, is that premarital counselor prepared? To handle that, or do they at least know their resources, right? Letting letting them know, hey, Becky Morales is someone you want to reach out to. I also thought about this too. Let's not forget, um, you know, age appropriate, right? But kind of, well, funny enough, I'm thinking about the teenagers, right? And kind oh, of, yeah. Um, I know again, kind of the the previous church that I was kind of connected with, and the um, you know the. Uh, youth pastor was doing kind of an open it was a night where they just had open questions about god mm, and different things like that and they talked about abortion with teenagers in high school and so i was there for that night and just curious to hear the teens talk about this what their beliefs were and stuff and so even age appropriate right starting younger too and, and just with sex education but also kind of having those conversations mm-hmm. on Kind of what what causes individuals to 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 lean towards abortion, right? Especially at a younger age, you know, if they're, you know, what I mean, teen oh, pregnancies. Yeah. That's also a thing. We're exactly. not just talking about older people, right? And that's what a real option says. We we do um, education and we go into. They last year they did thousands of students just talking to them about mm-hmm. healthy relationships and what that looks like, um, because mm-hmm. it is a, a secular school. They can't go into, um, mm-hmm. you know. A lot of stuff, but it is like making healthy relationships and, right. and healthy decisions and things like that. Emotions, puberty, things of that nature. But it's super powerful and it is a great way of like what is infatu- infatuation and what is love? What does both of those look like? Great. Yes. Great psychoeducation. Yeah. Real Options Open Medical Clinics is a proud sponsor of Permission to Grieve. They provide caring, compassionate, high quality, holistic health care with or without insurance support services, optimal health education, and reproductive loss healing to women, men, students, and families, positively impacting thousands each year in the Bay Area and beyond. Go to friendsofrealoptions.net to learn more. Cool. So we're going we're gonna to wrap up this episode. Um, we hope you found this fascinating and interesting. We want you to, to kind of talk to us. Tell us, what do you think? You know, what do you think the church should be doing or what do you think the church is doing well? You know, doing good. doing good thus far in terms of this conversation um, or what's your experience at your church? Um, you know, we'd be interested to, to hearing those yeah. stories. Or and praying why, for we'd love to even hear of why have you not talked to anyone about it? What is your fear mm-hmm. with it? Within the church. Within the church of uh-huh. what's your greatest fear with, with being open about it? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, and what's stopping you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want to we want to know. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear that. And as always, like we said, we're a resource. We have our own resources to provide you with. If your church doesn't have a small group or doesn't have whatever, right? We we have support it. Groups. We we um, support people all over the place, especially with the virtual support oh, yeah. groups. Our retreat is in person though in Northern California, but we do have people who fly in and, and travel time. to to meet us. So, thank you so much for listening. Um, at the end of the day, we just want to make it clear that we love the church, um, yes. and it is, you know, the bride of Christ, and we we want the the church to be able to respond in a loving way, in a way that represents God's heart, His nature, and the the heart of Jesus um, to those who are hurting. And so, this is not to be excluded, right? These these situations are very sensitive, yeah, um, and have a lot of different implications. And so, thank you for listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our content, um, and we have more coming for you. So thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for listening and watching what we're doing here. And please like, comment, and subscribe to us. Comment on the below. We'd, we'd love to hear from you how we can improve or anything you would like for us to talk about and to engage with. Again, thank you again. <laughs>